Are you looking to add a cooling system to your bandsaw? Today in the shop, we're taking a look at that. All right, guys, so welcome back to the channel. This is Kevin again with Yerkut Racing. As you can see behind me here, we have a new addition to the fab shop. Pretty excited about this one. Been wanting one for a while. It's a central machinery horizontal vertical bandsaw. It's a cheap saw. You can pick it up from Harbor Freight. Got this one used off of Facebook Marketplace. I think they usually go, they retail for about $369, I think it is right now. We ended up picking this one up for 200 barely has any use on it. They, they bought it a couple of months ago and it was just, it didn't fit in, in the shop the way they thought it would. So, you know, we picked it up for a good deal. I feel like we made out on it. The only thing is I really wanted it to have a coolant system on it. So for us, we're going to end up taking some sheet metal here and I'm going to come down. I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube about different ideas, the way guys have done it. The best one I've seen so far that I like is taking a piece of sheet metal and fabbing it to go around the bottom edge here on both sides and have a little drain back so we'll kind of play with that run with that idea a little bit don't know exactly how I want to do it to finish it up yet but I have a pump I ordered a little kit off of Amazon that comes with I'll show you all right so we ordered this little kit here off of Amazon for our nozzle it comes with this flexible head as you can see um, then it comes with this it's a magnetic base, which I like. Um, it'll allow us to move the coolant around if we need to for different applications. It has a shutoff valve on and off so we can adjust the amount of fluid coming out. And it came with the other side to screw in here, like into the block there. So that'll go there. Our inlet valve here. Or I guess this will be the inlet. This will be the outlet with the shutoff. This screws down into that and then it's adjustable. So I mean a pretty cool little kit. I want to say it was only like 13 bucks. You really can't beat it. Um, so yeah, we, anyway, we got this. We got to make the pan up and we got to make the tank. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So stay tuned and we're going to jump right in. All right, so since we're here and we have all this pulled out, I'm going to go ahead and assemble this little unit. Um, so once we get the pan and all made, we can just stick this on. Like I said, while we're here, we might as well do it. Alright, so there's our piece there, made up, like I said, we have our shutoff valve here, our inlet hose will go on there, and then we can adjust the head where we want it. Magnetic base, like, pretty strong magnet too, shouldn't have any problem staying where we need it, should be in good shape. All right, guys, so it was a little bit difficult to show you last night out here, a little too dark. Uh, but anyway, we got a basic shape made up, so we're going to test fit it now. Um, as you can see, this piece right here will slant up towards this back corner. So this will go in like that, and then it'll basically sit in there like, about like that. Um, so yeah, that should work out pretty good, and we'll have it canted probably to this corner over here um, so all of our fluid will be to drain from this side and from the back and kind of have a slope to go down that way and that should have us in good shape and it'll give us clearance down here on our handle I do see one thing over here on this side hopefully y'all can see it we'll bring you closer all right so I do see one area right here 
Um, this is a little thin and I want to try to get more coverage for the saw in the vertical position. So what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to come in about this far and then I'm going to angle it back, kind of follow the angle of the motor um, for the pans just to give us some more um, area back there for chips to fall in. Uh, but yeah, I think that'll do us pretty good. So anyway, I'm going to go in there and make the modification to the template for that piece and then we will try to trace it over to our metal and see if we can't get to cutting that out. All right, guys, so now that we've gotten our bulk material cut down, it's time to move over to the bandsaw and start making the rest of our cuts for the piece. Um, then after that, we'll have to move on and break everything. We got everything we can reach with the bandsaw. Go back over here now and uh, cut the rest of this. Like I just got a couple of cuts here, one right here, and that'll be out. This little dude here, and then one. I'll finish those two little cuts. We'll be good. Go hit them with the grinder. All right, guys. So now that we have the metal cut. To its final shape we need to go ahead and make our brakes and bend it up where it needs to be at um, i don't have a metal brake unfortunately so we're going to be doing it with the vise and maybe some pliers or something we'll have to see how it goes um, anyway that's what we're going to do now let's see if we can get it in shape all right so picking back up i just bent this piece here on the vise i forgot to push record on the camera so won't catch the first one but pretty straightforward There's our first corner. And our second corner. Starting to take shape pretty quickly. All right, there it is. We just gotta weld the seams and that part of the pan is done. Now this one is a lot bigger and gonna be the part I'm more concerned about trying to get right. I just it's got some really long breaks in it, so I'm gonna have to go slow and make sure we do a good job here. <laughs> All right, so these are our two pieces here. Uh, let's see how do I have this one set up. All right, so if you see right there, that's my mistake. I forgot to add the inch back in. You can see I added it on this one, um, but I forgot to do it over there. Uh, basically, I decided the the tray was initially right there, and I needed a little bit more clearance on that um, on the motor on the saw. So I decided to bring this back an inch and I just forgot to add that. So I have to add that piece in, but otherwise it'll line up. I'll weld the seam here and, um, well, actually, yeah, just down here and over. This piece will fold up and close off this section. So anyway, we're making progress. I got to get, um, I got to find my sheet metal pliers. I got somewhere that I can fold these with. It won't fit around the vise to do it. So anyway, I got to do this, these right here, and this one right here, and then I got to put a line across the middle, and we're gonna tilt this section up. So anyway, I'm gonna find those, and we're gonna keep on, guys. All right, guys. So it's the next day. I'm back in the shop here. I had baseball practice last night with my oldest daughter, so we had to take a break from it. 
Um, basically, we're just going to go ahead and catch back up where we left off and see if we can bend uh, the rest of this material into shape. So, we've got these little sheet metal pliers here. I guess I'm going to try to make them work. Hopefully they will. Not too bad for TIG welding some dirty sheet metal. Alright, I got most of the pan weld it in now i forgot to weld this one little seam right here so i have to do that when i do these go over to the band so i'll cut these little pieces out and then break them at 90 degrees and that'll give us our wraps around the four corners here all right i got our four little coupons cut out and our lines marked in the middle to break them now the coupons will go in like such. Uh, we'll weld those in and that'll seal the pan up. One at each corner. Alright guys, so we're back out. It's the next day. Uh, we're taking a look at, at the pan and how we want to fasten that to our saw. Initially I was going to weld it to the saw, but then I thought maybe I'd be better to just bolt it to it. Uh, so I made it a little bit looser for that. And I think that's going to be the way to go because at some point we may need to take this thing off to clean the pan out or something gets stuck underneath the top of the saw here. So. Um, that's the idea there and then we're gonna have a slope down from over here on this side down to this corner here and I'm gonna weld a bung in here um, with a little um, spot to hook the return hose to and then that'll just go back to the tank um, so basically the way we're gonna do this to make sure we got the pitch we need is we we, have, we know the saw is level so double checking it there on the base we got a good level base we're going to put this on the saw and we're going to zero that out. Alright, so now we know that our angle finder is zeroed. And then we're going to come down here. And as you can see, we got a 2.1 degree slope going down towards this back corner. Uh, so that's the idea. If we can put it in there just like that, I think we'll be in good shape. So I'm going to grab the drill and I'm going to pop a couple holes in this thing and we'll be good to go. Um, I guess the other thing that we should check too is we want to make sure that our slope is running both ways um, so we also need to double check it this way which I mean I can tell you from the bubble we got plenty but just so we know we'll stick this down here going that way 
and zero it one more time. Zero there. And about a degree of slope coming from the back of the saw towards this front corner. So yeah, we'll be good there. That's what we're gonna roll with. Pop a couple of holes in it and get it done. All right, guys, so as you can see, we got the pan all fabbed up and attached to the saw. I'm um, pretty happy with the way it turned out so far. It's all removable in case we need to service it and clean it out. If there's some pieces that get down that we can't really get otherwise. I um, don't think we'll have that problem, but just in case we need to remove it, we can. Um, got quite a bit of video on this already, so we're going to make a part two to the series for the tank um, and the plumbing, the saw. And then we'll give it a little test run in that one so you all can see how it's doing. Um, but for right now, I mean the saw stands up, no clearance issues down here on the pan at the bottom, so happy with that. Um, we got that slope we needed from this side down to this back corner over here, so it should be in good shape there. I appreciate you guys following along with the video, and uh, stay tuned for that part two coming out, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks.